Hey folks, it's Abby and today I'm going to be going through the books I'm going to try and get to in November. October was a rough month for me for a few different reasons and so I did not read as much as I wanted to but it did give me a good reminder in the fact that I don't need to finish my TBR and I don't need to push myself to read a lot of pages every single day. So it kind of uh, kicked my ass back into gear of making sure I'm caring about myself. So although this is a big TBR stack that I've got here this month, if I don't get through it all, that's fine. This is just what I'd really like to get to. I'm still going to try to get through it all, but if it ends up feeling like too much, I'm just going to leave it. Got a lot of books to get through. Some of them, about half of them, I'm carrying over from last month. They're books that I got either a fair bit or a little bit through and still really want to continue and finish. And then I also have some new books that I've added on for this month. So let's start with the books that I should have read last month. First up, we have the Illumicrate book for last month, and that was the book Eaters by Sunny Dean. This is a book about a young woman who grows up very privileged but very isolated and confined in this community of people who are very like humans but they eat books for nourishment, they don't eat food. However, these people have a populist problem, there are very few women so very few of them can then breed is essentially what they're used for um, and sometimes they will have girls, very rarely, and sometimes the boys that they have will be mind eaters, they don't eat books, they eat human brains or book eater brains. And our main character gives birth to a mind eater. He is supposed to be sent off to be looked after by knights who will train him up to be basically a guard dog. They call them dragons. But she instead decides to save her son. This... I, I have very much enjoyed what I've read so far from this. Very good so far. Then the Goldsboro pick for last month, and that is Mindwalker by Kate Dillon. I've almost finished this one. And this is a YA sci-fi dystopian. This is in a world where at around eight to 10 years old, these people are told by representatives from a company that they can volunteer to have all this technology put in their heads. And their families will then go off to live very rich, happy, fulfilled lives, but they'll never see them again because they'll have this tech in their heads, using it for this company, and they will die at around 18. And this tech is used to jump into other people's minds. So people are sent on these spy missions that are essentially unachievable, and when it hits that point where they need to be extracted, these children jump in. Now, by this point in the story, they are 17 coming on 18, so they're not children, but it's a very, very interesting story following the main character and how she learns more about the company, about her life, and about her city. As the book goes on. Then a book that I was challenged to read by Hannah and didn't get to, but I will, uh, and that is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. This follows, I'm barely into this one, I'm 35 pages in, but it follows a young woman who is in jail because she's been accused of murdering a lot of people, and she's murdered lot of, lots of people, but not the people that she's been accused of murdering, and that's bothering her, so she wants to get out of prison to find out who set her up and avenge herself. I'm as I said, only 35 pages in, but I'm enjoying what I've read so far. Then Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. A lot of you will already know what this one is about. It is about a young boy who is the bastard son of the heir to the throne, the prince. He is dropped off at the castle when his maternal side no longer wishes to care for him, and he is raised as a tool, as a utility by the king in order to help him maintain his own position on the throne and maintain his married bloodline's power. And then the last one of books from last month, is Dracula by Bram Stoker. I have finished this one already, I finished it on the first, uh, and I really enjoyed it. I really liked Dracula. This is the story that you all know, the quintessential vampire story. It's not the first, definitely wasn't the last. I'd like to read Carmilla now that I've read this, but I enjoyed this so much more than I thought. Not until I hit like chapter seven did I enjoy this. So if you're reading it, you, you can do it, you can do it, I promise. Just hit like chapter nine and if you're not interested then then ditch it uh but i loved this so much mina is an icon <laughs> and bram stoker is a secret feminist love it now on to the new books for november we'll start again with the book boxes so the first book is the illumicrate book of the month and that is the whispering dark by kelly andrew i know nothing about this <laughs> What is it? Uh, Delaney always talked to the dark, but now the dark talks back. 
She is tired of being seen as fragile just because she's deaf, so when she's accepted into a prestigious pro program at a uni that trains students to slip between parallel worlds, she's excited for the chance to prove herself. And I'm sure it all goes wrong. I know that the author of this is deaf as well, so I'm 100% here for some good representation. I'm looking forward to trying this one out, and it's stunning. Then the Goldsboro book for this month is Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chepeko. This I'm quite excited for because I have really enjoyed Rin Chepeko's writing in The Never Tilting World by this author, which is the first book in a duology. So I'm excited for this one. This is apparently a vampire story following kind of like a, an outcast uh, vampire hunter whose mother has run off with a vampire and so everyone's like, hmm, is he actually half vampire? I have no idea, uh, but because I enjoyed The Never Tilting World so much, I'm really excited to see what Rin Chepeko ends up doing with this book. Then I was sent from the publisher Between Starshine and Clay Conversations from the African Diaspora by Sarah Ladipo Manika. This is what it says in the tin. It is a non-fiction book where Sarah has went and talked to a lot of influential people in the African diaspora and asked for their opinions on general topics, on racism, on sexism, on a lot of different topics and just basically got to chat with them. I've started this book I'm really enjoying it so far. Thank you so much Footnote for sending this through to me. I am really really enjoying it and I know that this is going to be minimum four star read. Fantastic nonfiction. Um, and I will have rolling over my face the list of individuals who Sarah speaks to in this book. Then Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Balika Jaswal. This is the book that Hannah's getting me to read this month. Uh, hopefully I'll actually be able to get to this one this month and join in the live show. I wasn't well enough last time. But yeah, this one is about a Punjabi woman who isn't living up to her family's expectations and so she decides to volunteer at a local community centre and help some Punjabi widows learn to write stories and uh, they end up going for the erotic stories and she's like, oh dear god. Uh, <laughs> it's essentially what I know about this. So, very excited to dive in. And then the final book on my TBR is Dune by Frank Herbert. The sci-fi novel, apparently. I don't know, I've not read it. I'm excited and intimidated to read this one. My partner really really likes it so I want to read it so that we can watch the film. I know he really wants to see it but at the same time like it's 560 pages which isn't too bad but the writing is small and also they there aren't actually any chapter splits it's just sometimes there's a break and a quote and then it continues on uh, which intimidates me. I like the kind of like yeah you've hit this mark of chapters. Um, so th this will be interesting to dive into. I'm going to be starting it soon because I'm worried that if I don't I won't finish it by the end of the month <laughs> or the end of the year. Uh, so yeah I need to dive into this one but I am excited for it. I just hope that I'm intimidated for no good reason. And those are the 10 books that are on my TBR this month. 10 isn't too big of a number. I've definitely read a lot more and a lot less than that throughout this year so I think it's a nice middle ground uh, and I have read some of them already so I'm not fully at 10 that I need to read as of filming which is always nice. <laughs> I just need to dive into these and see how far I get. Let me know down in the comments below if you read any, I've got them stacked up here, <laughs> if you've read any of these, what you think of them, if you recommend that I definitely <laughs> pick some up or if you think I should leave them for the wayside and just pick them up if I get the time let me know and also let me know what one book on your TBR for November. Have we got any of the match? Thank you so much for watching folks. If you'd like to see any more from me and how stressed I do or do not get in November with my reading then please do hit the subscribe button down below and all of my social media links are down in the description as well along with the content warnings for all of these books. Thanks for watching folks and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.